Hi, I'm Mr. Carrington. Welcome to the Art Lab video series where aspiring art students interview former graduates about their journey from high school into college and beyond into successful careers in the arts. Today's guest will be Southside graduate and professional artist and glassblower Emily Dorflein, who will be interviewed by student Rebecca Perez. Hi, I'm Rebecca Perez. I'm a senior in, so in Southside High School, and today I'm here with Emily Dorflein, who's a glass blower, and she attended Tyler School of Art and Architecture. So yeah. if you'd like to go into your background. Sure, yep. Um, yes, I am a glass blower. Um, I graduated here from Southside in 2015, and I made my way down to Philly. Um, went to Tyler for five years, graduated in 2020, now I'm back in New York, I live in Brooklyn, and that's where I work at a glass studio as a studio technician, a hot shop assistant, and a teacher, educator, and all of that. And thank you so much for having me, I'm so You're excited. You're welcome. It's going to be fun. Yes. Okay, so I guess my first question is, how did you discover glass blowing? Yes. Because I feel like that's a very, like not many people know about that field, so mm -hmm. how did you first discover it? Yeah. Um, so I did not discover glass until my sophomore year of college. Um, I started off as a painting major. I knew that I wanted to go into painting when I was in high school, only planned for that. And then I saw that my school had a glass blowing studio. So I ended up taking a class my sophomore year and that's how I discovered it and I continued ever since then. That's really cool. I like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. So what what fascinates you the most about it? What like what really interests you when yeah. you first discovered it? Yeah. Glass is such a rare material to work with, just mm -hmm. like um, how it's like really hard to discover. Um, it's such a scary material as well because it's so hot. A lot of people yeah. get like a little bit nervous. So I think that's one of my favorite parts about it is of how how dangerous it could be, mm -hmm. but being able to learn a material, to work with a material and adapt to a material is one of my one of like the reasons why I went into it. Yeah. Is you know, you are the painter, but you have to learn how to work with the glass. You know, the yeah. glass doesn't work with you, you work for it. So that's like one of my that's nice. That's yeah. nice. So, what inspires you to create? Yeah. What like what's your creative process mm -hmm. when you first create a piece? Mm -hmm. So, I love technique, mm -hmm. and I'm more of a technical worker than a conceptual worker. So, all of my work is um, is really playful right now. I'm learning all different types of techniques with colors, with structure, with um, Kind of like design with some of these pieces here. I started off with um, really opaque and just trying around with different colors, but then this gets a little bit more technical, and I'm just kind of playing around with different techniques. So that's where I kind of I base my work on um, trying new things and trying hard techniques. Yeah, is kind of my inspiration right now. Just learning still. Yeah, I like that. The learning process is yes. what helps you to. Like yeah. The desire to learn. The desire to learn, Which absolutely. Is, is I like that. Yeah. How long does it take for you to create pieces like this? So that one in particular took, I would like to say, an hour and a half. Okay. Um, the reason is because it could start off, I have a, this is color, this is mm -hmm. how you add color to glass, this is green, you can see it's a little green on the edge. Yeah. So basically it starts off like this. I pick it up on a rod, I have to stretch it really um, thin, and then I get these pieces of cane. So I, I have to do that, and then I have to wait for this to cool down, right, because it yeah. was really hot. And then I have to take this, and I have to roll it up into a cylinder shape, and um, then I have to gather clear glass over it, I have to blow it out, I have to make it into the form. Um, but doing that, it's a whole other type of process. It's called like a wigwag or a switchback. Yeah. Um, so doing that process right there took a really, really long time. So I'd like to say it took me like an hour and a half in total. Okay. We're starting from like the color to stretching to rolling mm -hmm. to manipulating to forming. 
an hour That's though. so crazy. Yeah. Usually so, it could take like 15 minutes to make a regular cup, but that yeah. took me an hour and a half. <laughs> okay, okay. And you, to mold it into this shape, mm -hmm. it has to be heated to like an extremely like high degree. Yes. So how hot would it have to be? Um, it probably gets um, to 2,000 degrees <laughs> and like maybe a little bit less. Um, yeah, glass has to be really hot and stay hot. Mm -hmm. So we gather out of a furnace that's basically just a pool of hot molten glass. Yeah. And then we pick it up on the end of like a, a pipe basically like a big straw, yeah. and then we have to keep that hot. So we have reheating chambers, they just look like holes that shoot fire. Um, and that's also set at over 2000 degrees, and we just have to keep working, keeping it hot. So it gets, gets very, very warm. That's so interesting. <laughs> that's, I feel like that process can be very stressful. Do you have a team to work with you and help yes. you out? Yes, um, okay. and that's also one of my favorite things about glass is being able to work with a team. Being able to work with a friend, uh, a coworker, uh, somebody that is a teacher, um, and so I do work with a team, and that team member, I tell them exactly what I want, and we're both there for the same reason to get to an end result, whether it's my work or I'm helping them out and making their work. Um, it's definitely a team sport, and that is why I went into glass because I needed. A team sport. I needed a community. I needed. Um, I needed people around me. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's very very nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So another question I have. Oh, wait. So when you first applied to art school, yes. What What did you major in? Mm -hmm. And like that process from going from your first major to glass mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Mm -hmm. So I knew that I was going to go into art since I was a little kid. Um, and when I first applied, I knew I was going to be a painting major. So when I first went in, I'm pretty sure I was declared painting and drawing. Um, so I like didn't really have to, I was pretty stubborn and I didn't really pay attention to other classes like glass, like sculpture, like yeah. ceramics, um, fibers and materials and even illustration. Mm -hmm. um, but then once I took a painting class my sophomore year, after I did like my foundation classes for the first year, I really didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I did. Mm -hmm. So I kind of went through this really big struggle because I didn't know who I was as an artist. And then that kind of kicked me in the butt and was like, I have to stop thinking that I'm only gonna be this one thing and I have to try everything that I possibly can because mm -hmm. I know that I can be an artist and I will be an artist but just finding the material was um, a little difficult at first. Yeah. And that's when I took a glass class and I absolutely loved it. That's amazing. Yeah. I love that. One would say love at first sight. <laughs> yes, true love. <laughs> so um, when you first went into college, yeah. did you have sort of a culture shock? Because I feel mm -hmm. like college and high school are two very different things. Yeah. So what was something that shocked you the most about mm -hmm. college compared to high school? Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely leaving like your, your friends and your family was really hard. Yeah. And having to navigate a new space with new people. And especially like I was pretty quiet mm -hmm. um, when I was a freshman. So making friends and not having a comfort to like go back home, go to like your parents going to like your friends that you've been friends with since like preschool say yeah. um that was a big shock and going from Southside, we you know we had all of our art classes but there were only a few of us that went to art school yeah so going from my friends who were mainly like different majors than art mm -hmm. that was also different just going being thrown into an art school where everybody was art and everybody had art ideas yeah. was also a big shock because um, you know everybody had different ideas and you'd be like well I like their idea better than mine mm -hmm. like maybe I don't like my ideas because it was more of a conceptual school than a technical school yeah and I didn't realize that I, I liked technique more than the conceptual thought mm -hmm. so that was like a big shock of trying to navigate who I was as an artist at such a young age um, and also just being in a new city 
being in a new city and I have no idea where I am. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't even like know how to get anywhere on campus was really hard. Mm -hmm. um, but then you kind of learn as you, as the days go on, you get comfortable, you get a routine, you make friends, whether it's like your roommate or the people on, on your floor or the people in your class. So it got a lot better, but at first it was like a shock in many different ways of just like being comfortable yeah, in space. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. What was one thing that you wish you knew before applying to college? Mm -hmm. um, one thing I wish I knew. I wish I knew how to navigate my time. That's definitely a big thing. Mm -hmm. I can understand mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, you have you have your school, you come to high school and you start at 7.58 and you end at 2.32, Yeah. right? And it's the same every day. Mm -hmm. But then going to college, it could be like, you have a class at 8 a.m., but then you have a class at 6 p.m. Yeah. And then the next day is completely different and you have to make sure that you're managing your time mm -hmm. and like having to learn that. But then like applying, I don't know, I, I mean, applying to art school is a lot different than applying to any other school because you have to have your portfolio. Yeah. And a lot, like, a lot of other people didn't have to do a portfolio, maybe. Mm -hmm. And, um, I don't know, I think I, think I, but I do think I knew everything when I did apply to school. I think, I think Sessa kind of really prepared me for that, and my teachers here really prepared me for applying. Yeah, so I, I feel the I same too way. Yeah, I, I feel, feel pretty like, prepared. Yeah, this I feel like the school really helps helps to like help you navigate through college. Yeah, yeah, and it's very like helpful, and you feel a lot better about it mm -hmm. going through it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So when creating your portfolio, mm -hmm. what was your experience and what was your thought process? Yeah. Throughout? So from what I can remember from my portfolio, <laughs> um, I had. Some schools did require specific drawings. I remember I had to do a self-portrait. was definitely yeah. a requirement. Mm -hmm. um, so making sure that I made a, made a piece that connected with me and my work, but also trying to make sure that the school would like it mm -hmm. was really hard. Yeah. Um, but I did do a lot of portraits for my portfolio, um, just trying to show as many different skill sets as I could, mm -hmm. but also like not really knowing what other like other people applying were going to bring in their portfolio it was a little nerve nerve wracking. Yeah. But like I said, I think the teachers here definitely helped with my portfolio. Yeah, it was stressful. It was definitely stressful because you know you're applying to a college and you want to get into this college and yeah. you're hoping that whoever is reviewing your work likes it. Mm -hmm. But you have to make sure that you like it. Yeah, I think that's, I think it's hard, especially as a person who's applying yeah. to art schools, mm -hmm. you feel a sense of like pressure because you want it to be perfect. Yeah. But at the same time, you want to be able to put in stuff that you love, mm -hmm. cause, because art's a process, you know? It and it yeah. takes a long time for you to create a piece mm -hmm. and to put all like, like everything that you can, like your best effort into Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So I can understand yeah. like the stress and then uh, yeah. learning to also uh, make sure that what you create is what you love. Exactly. And I do remember I brought in pieces that I didn't finish. Mm -hmm. I brought in and I showed them, I was like, this is something that I am working on. It is not finished because I am thinking about this, this, and this for it. Mm -hmm. But I do remember I did not bring all finished pieces. Yeah. And then that created a conversation okay. with okay. whoever was reviewing my work. I do remember mm -hmm. that. And that wasn't bad. Like, it has to be perfect, but I didn't even bring finished work. Some yeah. were finished, but some weren't. Okay, back to glass blowing. Yes. When you, um, when you, after discovering glass blowing, mm -hmm. when when you first began the process and mm -hmm. began creating, what was something, um, what was something that you loved the most about it, and yeah. what was, like, what did you like about the environment? Mm -hmm. I loved everything about my environment. <laughs> my the department that I was in was mainly women, mm -hmm. which was rare, and that gave me a lot of comfort. Um, 
a lot of the people in my classes and they were small. I had a yeah. class of like five. It was like oh, me wow. and four other people. Mm -hmm. So I was really able to learn a lot. Um, and I loved being in an environment where I could learn something, be comfortable with breaking it and not even being able to keep something. Like I would just go to class and I would break everything. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel like I failed. Yeah. And that's the exact environment that I felt for four years of being in the glass studio. Mm -hmm. And my professors that I had, they were all artists as well. So that also gave me a lot of confidence because they would give me real life advice. I mean, the our teachers here are also artists, but yeah. it's very different going from like high school to college and being so specific and being in that medium yeah. and giving you that, that extra extra advice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just like an overall comfortable and great environment for learning and messing up and learning from your mistakes. Yeah, I think that's probably, I like that idea. Yeah. Like, for me, I'm excited for college because I know that you're able to kind of, you can create your own path. Yes. And you're able to have your own, what's the word? Well, you're able to have your own process mm -hmm. and you're able to um, figure out what's more comfortable for you and you can get through your college experience and learn more about yourself and mm -hmm. more about what you like yes. and what you want to do with your life. Mm -hmm. And so I really, I'm excited to learn more about Absolutely. what I'm able to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's great. Yeah. <laughs> so um, after college, mm -hmm. What was, what did you do after college? Yeah. Well, what was your expectations after college and what did you, what was your plan? Yeah. Um, I'm definitely a planner. Mm -hmm. um, it took me a long time to become a planner, but yeah. <laughs> I, growing up and knowing that I wanted to be an artist and, you know, I did have people tell, not like, None of my family, my family was very supportive of me becoming an artist, but I did have people that were like, you're not gonna make any money. What job are you gonna get? How do you even do that? Yeah. I so know. I made sure that I did everything that I could to get to where I am today. Mm -hmm. I worked really, really hard and I made sure that I took every opportunity I could to get to where I am today. You know, you always have to think about your future self and making sure that you have that job. So what I did was, you know, I knew I wanted to be an artist. I thought I was gonna be a painter and that didn't work out. Then I went into glass, I loved it. I wanted to be a glass blower. So when one of my professors brought in an artist from Brooklyn, I knew that I was gonna move back home to New York. So I had to be like, okay, I wanna live in New York. Where can I work? Yeah. Is there glass in New York? And then I saw that there was a studio called Urban Glass in mm -hmm. Fort Greene in Brooklyn. So when that artist came from Urban Glass, I made sure that I wrote down whatever I wanted to say because I was so nervous. I had to like write mm -hmm. it down and reread it like 40 <laughs> times. I was like, my name is Emily. Hi. Like, <laughs> And then I asked if they did any internships because internship can really, really help you get a foot in the door. And it, and it did. I did an internship, I did it once a week for a whole summer, that gave me my first real life TAing opportunity. I TAed a group of high school kids for a week and it was such a great experience. Mm -hmm. And then they remembered me and oh, I would email nice. them. And, and then when I graduated, I mean, I graduated in the pandemic, it was literally May of 2020. Yeah. So I didn't have, a, I technically was out of a job for a year and a half, mm -hmm. but I made sure that I would keep in, keep in contact and I would email them, be like, hi, do, um, I'm looking for an opportunity. And I knew that they had studio technicians, which is another foot in the door, right? Like mm -hmm. right above interning. Yeah. Like a basic base level job. Mm -hmm. And I would learn about the studio, I would learn all about how I can make this. And I thought that was really interesting. So I just kept emailing them, literally bugging them. Hi, like, I'm still here, <laughs> I'm in New York. Yeah. So then I was able to interview and I got the job. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you just have to make sure that you reach out, talk to people, because people will give you that opportunity. Just like mm -hmm. that artist did, I still work with her now. Her name is Liesl Schubel. She was, I interned for her, and now I work with her. 
and That's it's amazing. amazing. Yeah, and just don't be afraid to ask because okay. people like people are willing to give you the opportunity because you know we all all artists as a collective we all want to make sure that art continues on yeah right mm -hmm. you just have to ask okay yeah. yeah so were there any um artists that inspired you and mm -hmm. that you really look up to and did you get to meet any <laughs> yes <laughs> um when i when i first started you hear about like all these main really big names mm -hmm. and one of them was lino tali pietra and he was an italian he is an italian artist he just retired a couple years ago but i did end up meeting him this summer so that was crazy that was like a huge <laughs> thing for me and um literally printed out that photo and it's in my room <laughs> um and i have like a bunch of different artists that i definitely look up to and going to work and learn at art schools around the country, you get to meet them. Yeah. And a special thing is nobody is like too famous to talk to. Yeah. Like you can just go up and be like, hi, my name is Emily. I love mm -hmm. your work. Can I ask you a question about it? And they'd be like, absolutely. And then you can have like a 40 minute conversation or you can go get coffee with them. People so go, amazing. yeah, and there's an annual glass conference called the gas conference and it happens every year it's been happening every year since I think the 70s still um, and all different artists from around the world come into one location and they do demonstrations they do lectures and then you all go to a big party together and then you mm -hmm. all hang out so it's just it's just such a great community mm -hmm. and it's very small too which yes. also helps. yeah I love that yeah I feel like I know that there are a lot of artists that I like that I'm very inspired by yeah. and like I wish I could meet them. Yeah. And I feel that like that kind of sounds like a dream to me. Yeah, absolutely. And I felt so amazing that you got to meet some of your uh, inspirations. And you, you could know. too. You, you totally <laughs> I'm excited to go to college yeah. and to meet new people. Good. Oh. I'm excited for you. It's such a Thank great time. You. You're gonna have so much fun. Yay. I'm so ready for it. Yeah. <laughs> how has this career and this mm. field specifically, how has it impacted who you are as a person? Yeah. Like, what has it done for you, like, emotionally? Yeah. It's done everything. It, I am so excited to go to work every day. Mm -hmm. Every day. And even with, like, the seven different jobs that I'm working, like, if I'm just going to the studio and I'm a studio tech that day and I'm like scraping the dirt out of this like trap that we have in our one of our studios like mm -hmm. it doesn't matter because I'm so excited to be there. Mm -hmm. Glass has like I, don't, I really don't know where I would be if I didn't have Glass right now. Mm -hmm. I feel so lucky to have found it. Yeah. Um, the people that are in the studio that I work at, the studios that I visit, all all people that I meet at schools that I I worked at this summer, I worked at Pilchuck Glass School, and the people there are incredible. People that choose to go there for a month, three months, a week, and just learn the material and genuinely care about everybody around you like they have tables like this in our lodge and we would eat lunch together and you could sit next to anyone and just have the most amazing conversation mm -hmm. and they could be from belgium and then you would just wow. talk about glass like glass has allowed me to love waking up super early spending 12 <laughs> hours at the studio going home exhausted waking up and doing it all over again and being genuinely happy and excited and learning when mm -hmm. i assist other artists they teach me so I, it's not like you stop learning when you leave college. You are always learning. Yeah. And that's the best spot. Like you, if you go to school for illustration and you leave and you work with an illustrator that has 40 more years experience than you, they could teach you what they know, you know? Yeah. And that's the best part is you're always learning. Mm -hmm. And I talked to, I actually asked your questions to a lot of people at my studio mm -hmm. this week and they all had like the same answer of it's a great community yeah. it's a great experience classes mm -hmm.
And I like that. And yeah. I like, uh, I want to be, like, I want to be able to meet people that have the same thought process as me. Yeah. And have the same, like, artistic mind. Absolutely. And you will. You definitely will. Yeah. You definitely will. And, like, I'm, I'm excited to see that, like, the community, you know? Yeah. Because when, when I've gone to visiting other colleges, mm -hmm. it's, like, to see everyone, like, being so kind to each other yeah. and to like you could just get into a conversation with anybody yeah and everyone everyone is so like like it's such a nice community and it everyone's is. so nice yeah and i feel like in high school a lot of people are very anxious to talk to everybody and definitely they're more they're more worried about themselves and like what they're doing and mm -hmm. things that are going on they aren't focused on like just learning to like be passionate about yeah. the things that they do yeah. and like love themselves for what they're capable of doing mm -hmm. and who they are mm -hmm. and I'm excited to go to college yes. and to have that experience yeah. and to finally meet people who are just who are like me and Absolutely. want to do what I do yeah and yeah I'm excited for that yeah and you will and I love that you you say that because like there you're gonna meet you are gonna meet people like that because mm -hmm. I met people like that. I still meet people like that. We, I just had a, like a two hour conversation yesterday about glass philosophy. And it was <laughs> like, you know, I want to nerd out on this object for yeah. three hours and people will do it <laughs> and people will do it. Right. Yeah. And just like, don't be afraid to go up. And like, if you see somebody in your class in your future class and they're doing something interesting, like, don't be mm -hmm. afraid to go up and ask and be like, that's so cool. What are you doing? And then mm -hmm. somebody will come up to you and be like, your work is awesome. What are you doing? You know, don't be afraid because it's so fun talking to people. Mm -hmm. And I was, when I was in college, I didn't talk, I, like my first semester, I was like, I'm not talking to anyone. I'm so nervous. I can't yeah. talk to anyone. Like I, like, I'm just like, just sat there, did my work. <laughs> and then in my fifth year, I was going into different departments and being like, oh my God, your work is awesome. And then like, let's have a conversation about it. And then maybe you'll learn something that you want to put into your work. And like, you learn different techniques and you see somebody yeah. else illustrating something. You're like, that is a great way to do that. Mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And yeah, don't be afraid to like, just have a conversation with anybody because people are cool. People are awesome. And I love to nerd out about art. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I love it. Mm -hmm. Okay. What are all the tools that you use? Can you explain Yes. That? Oh my God, yes. These are my babies. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> these are called jacks. Mm -hmm. um, this is like one of the most important tools. Um, its main function is to create a restriction line between your pipe and mm -hmm. the glass. So it's basically like a neckline. Yeah. Because if you have your glass and it's just like solidly connected to a rod, mm -hmm. you can't break it off, right? You want to yeah. take it off of the rod and you want to keep it like this. Yeah. So it would create basically a neckline, just like really skinny, and then you'd be able to knock it off. Um, these are called diamond shears. You can see it has a little diamond shape. This is where you cut glass, and this is to hold a pipe. Um, it basically will, um, it can cut glass off, or you can, these are used for color drops to add color. So you can mm -hmm. use this. This is colored bar. It's just yeah. solid glass. It's green it's a transparent it looks black but mm -hmm. it's actually light green um so once that is really hot you can actually cut that these are called straight shears um these are also to cut glass mm -hmm. just like just like a scissor um and then these are just two different size tweezers so you can like poke pull twist mm -hmm. anything okay. so these are for like shaping and forming mm -hmm. yeah but these are these are just a few of many different tools. This is just what I own. Yeah. Yeah. How long did it take for you to learn how to use all of these? Um, I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. um, so I've only been doing making glass for like five years, almost six years. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm still learning on like how to hold a tool correctly. Yeah. And different ways to hold it and for mm -hmm. different reasons. So it can take you 30 years on how to use them. But like, I feel, I feel pretty confident using them. And I'd say like five years was great. Okay. Like I started in 2017 and then had like some holdbacks from COVID, but yeah, but yeah, definitely like you can be doing this for 80 years oh, and then like maybe fully learn how to use a tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Absolutely. um, with the art that you create, mm -hmm. um, these are beautiful and Thank I would you. love to have these in my home. <laughs> they're like they're so amazing. Are you going to be selling any of them? Um, I hope at one point, 
Mm-hmm. Um, I hope to be selling them at one point. Creating glass is expensive. Yeah. And pricing them can be difficult. Um, just because, you know, you want to be... I like to make a fair price, but then you it also is... You have to think about the money that you spent on the color, yeah. the money that you spent renting time at a studio, mm-hmm. and things like that. But I will be selling them soon. I'm going to be selling a few things, actually, this month um, with Backyard Players. Mm-hmm. You know Backyard Players no. in town by chance? <laughs> um, shout out to Ellen White. Um, she's going to let me sell some glass ornaments and glass faces and that's technically going to be like the first time I'm selling things like that okay. so it's going to be this month but hopefully I will be selling things like this mm-hmm. in the near future but right now I'm just learning still learning technique and trying okay. to figure out what my um mm-hmm. what I want to make because it, it, it was so different this was me last year and like this is me this year you know it's oh, wow. it changes a lot yeah yeah but Still learning, still figuring out my style, mm-hmm. basically, before I like really go in and sell something like production work. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for really having enjoyed me. talking to you today. Yeah, it was so and great. All this stuff is very, very beautiful. Thank and you. do you have any social media platforms that people can find you? I do. Um, you can follow me on Instagram, Emily yeah. Dorfline Glass. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, uh, come to Urban Glass. Come check it out. Come mm-hmm. see the studio anytime you want. Weekends, weekdays, nights, whatever. We have classes there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you can follow me on there and come visit. Anytime you want. Nice. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Cool.